Well, thank you all for coming out. This is the uh, How To YouTube panel, joining yeah. us up on stage. Saber Spark. Hey guys. Paleo Steno. Hello. And Jay Holler. Hello there. And we are the panel that is up against the episode viewing today. So, Wait. woo! Thank you guys for coming out. It also happened at Winnie City when we did this panel for the first time. It did, and it actually made for a really kind of a personable panel. It was fun. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think they just like to challenge us. So, so thank you guys for coming out. Uh, definitely plan to have fun for the next hour. Um, and yeah, I uh, know. I forget which one of us even set up this panel. I did. Okay, Paley, I'll let you take the floor then. Yeah, so I had an idea for like doing a panel like this because um, we had just been doing like uh, podcast panels and pretty much just talking about anything. But then I was like, you know what? Since we all we all do like YouTube stuff, we might as well like do like some kind of like I guess instruction, not exactly instruction, but I guess it, advisory on how to do, make like YouTube videos and like how to create a successful channel and all that. So I figured it'd be a fun thing to do at one of these conventions since YouTube is like a big part of the fandom. And what's what's kind of fun is the four of us up here kind of all have a different thing going on with yeah. each of our channels, really. So there's a bit of variety up here. Um, I know Jay has more of a hand in Applejack stuff. Only Applejack stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely Applejack. Yeah. <laughs> and Jay, what do you uh, what do you do with your channel? <laughs> Um, so the majority of my channel, I started out doing um, PMVs um, that was because I didn't know how to do any editing at all. I just learned it from scratch, just uh, basically trying and failing until, you know, perfecting it. Um, and then from there, I moved on to more short kind of, um, if you're familiar with uh, something called the Anthology series. Um, it's more like short skits using, you know, existing audio, just, you know, and using uh, show clips or animations, what have you. Um, and I found I liked that a lot more, so that's kind of what I was focused, fo more focused on, is uh, these short skits and such. Um, along the way, I also picked up a series um, from another a guy who uh, gave, it a, <laughs> gave it to me. Um, but he was, um, it's a top ten series that I now run everyone, and I think Saber actually ran it for a period of time. We did. Uh, yep. yep. Um, so Glad they took it away from him. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, so I've been doing that for a couple of years now, um, and just, just it, it's a top ten that showcases the uh, the best works from the, or people vote on what they think is the best uh, works in the fandom, and they then um, you know it's displayed up every month. I have not put it out this month yet because of this convention, and I've had people yelling at me about getting it out there. But uh, where is it, Jay? It's uh, it's not ready yet. <laughs> no, not yet, please. Um, but yeah, no, it's just um, a variety of things. I mean, I've I've worked a few collaborations. I work with a group called. Brownies react. <laughs> you guys just had a panel. Yeah, we just, um, it went well. I think people liked it. Um, and then um, yeah, it's doing work with a you know, PMV group called The Collaboratory. They make really high quality PMV stuff and just all over the place. Um, aside from doing like our own, you know, real life skits and comedy sketches with my friends and stuff on our channel. So that's pretty much the, the full run. All right. Cool. So what I do is I do like reviews of stuff. I started out doing like reviews of like Pony episodes and then um, I started doing like longer videos and um, now I just do like movie reviews and, and uh, stuff about cartoons and stuff and now I also do the podcast with um, with Saber and Race. So um, that's, that's what I do now. I uh, had a project back in like 2011, 12 or 2011. One of those. And it was uh, this kind of a video talking about his bronies. And it was for a sociology class, and I uploaded that to YouTube. It's called Battle of the Brony. Uh, you folks liked it, and that's where I got my start. I did top ten for a while, like Jay did, or he does. He still does. Um, it's weird to think that that series is almost like, like you wear the mantle and you pass it along or something. <laughs> I'll only give it off when it's ready to be the chosen <laughs> one of YouTube. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so after doing some funny stuff, I, I, I could never really ever figure out what my channel was. Like some of them would be like analytical videos, and then some would be, it'd be like comedy videos. But as of late, I've been doing more um, just videos talking about, I guess, YouTube, meta stuff, entertainment. Um, I've been going in that direction, so that's where I'm currently at. Grace, how about you? I'm an artist. I, uh, I'm drawing. No, I... Uh, <laughs> 
I kind of have a really weird mixture of videos on mine um, that ranges from PMVs that I enjoy putting together at the end of each season to the Bronies React series, which is beyond taken off and super humbled by that. Um, and then I also have series like the Low Budgets, where I take cars and crash them up and smash them up and just love recording it. And, um, and yeah, and just a bunch of stuff in between, including convention vlogs, in case you guys have seen us walking around at the convention uh, with a camera in hand. You know, don't be afraid to wave at the camera or smack it out of my hands or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've always kind of had a free spirited channel um, to just make whatever I feel like making at the time. So, and I started making a couple Zootopia videos as well. Big surprise there, with a, a music video that Gabe and I collaborated on. So, so that was fun. Um, and yeah, uh, I guess uh, that's kind of a roundup of all of our channels up here and whatnot. I see Jay's drawing too. What are you drawing, Jay? That's crazy, right? <laughs> He's drawing Saber Spark. Um, so yeah, I guess um, like we'll probably kind of go through some YouTube stuff and whatnot, but if you guys have any questions at any point, you know, feel free to ask. Anything you guys are wondering? Yes? Could you go down the line and tell me if your sound editing is your favorite, best, what do you think sound editing? Sound? Yes, for your sound editing, what, what's your oh. favorite program or thing to do or... Hmm. I use Audacity. Yeah, Audacity same thing is, to make. Yeah, it's a very good program that's free and it's what get for free is amazing. Yeah, it's very, it's very versatile. Yeah, it's like, like a lot of professional YouTubers use it. He's the biggest editor up here, Jay Holler. So, yeah. like, um, none of us are sound engineers, obviously. Um, as I said, Audacity is really the biggest bang for your buck, which is free. But you, it does a lot of what most, the most simple stuff that you need, like noise canceling, you know, editing out, like you have a little hiss, you know, when you're filming stuff. or. Um, good cutting, so, you know, be able to cut stuff. Um, it's just pretty much all in one, the best free tool I think that's out there. Um, and if you want to like do stuff like FL Studio, that's a little more uh, involved, or specifically music making and remixing and stuff. But I don't really think we do a lot of. But yeah, sound editing Audacity is pretty much the best way to go. What, what's the what's the smallest division of a frame or a second that you can get down? To? Hmm. Point one. Uh, frames. It depends how many frames you do per second. So if you do like, if you're doing a tip, let's say you're doing like the um, the show. The show runs at 24 frames a second, essentially. Um, so you can get one one twenty fourth of a second if you're doing the show. You know, it, it depends on the frame rate you choose. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like one twenty fourth of a second. You can scroll through and edit and um, change, do changes. And it's really that's really nice to do, especially um, if you have to do it's a little bit of sleight of hand kind of thing. A little, um, Especially when you're editing, like you're making changes and, and doing that kind of thing, doing things that you know are there, but the it's so seamless that the audience doesn't even know it's there. Which is yeah. Yes, thank you. Mm. I have some trouble with sound editing, so mm. that's mm. good advice. I really appreciate. You're welcome. I do a lot of mine in. Uh, I edit with Sony Vegas, and I, I do a lot of my sound editing in there, especially with like the reacts because I'm getting um, footage from up to ten or more people and everyone's levels are different. <laughs> and so I have to mess around with that. Um, so a lot of my editing happens from the camera source or, or sometimes people will splice together audio and, and you know send me that file, but I still have to master it to make it because my older reacts, I wasn't as used to messing around with audio. And so some of the levels, we'd go from you know some guy who's like, yeah, and then we'd have Solrak who's like, yeah! <laughs> People weren't too excited about that, so. Yeah. Uh, Roku, you had a hand up. Origins of your name. Origins of your names. Mm. I don't know. Uh, Jay Haller, well, um, you already know my, my last name. <laughs> um, is, my name is Jeff Haller. That, that was it. <laughs> Where did the two come from? <laughs> <laughs> there is, eh, there's a real, there is, a, when I was in college, um, I was assigned my college email was Jay Haller too, and I went, and then I went to my YouTube channel, I made it the same, but Jay Haller, just regular, was also available, I just didn't think about it, because I didn't, at the time, think I was going to be making any content, um, so it really didn't matter, that was what happened. Um, paleo, uh, paleo comes from paleontology, which I was, like, really into as a kid, 
And then a steno comes from my favorite species of dolphin, steno bredenensis, which is a rough duke dolphin. Nerd. <laughs> uh, um, my name, yeah. and here comes my story now. Uh, I played Warcraft. <laughs> uh, I have a name called Saber Steve, which um, is from Scuba Steve, because that was taken from it's Saber Steve. I mean, you took the count, Saber Steve was taken. I'm like, what kind of jerk would take that name? It's a bad name, why would they use it? Uh, and then I thought, well, mm, Saber, uh, I need an inspiration, a, a spark of inspiration. <laughs> Saber's bird. It's not taken. Cool, I'll use that. Nerd. <laughs> uh, for me, way back when I first started using the internet, there was a good old function called AOL Instant Messenger. And I'm like, oh, I've got to come up with like a really good name here. Well, I like race cars. So race. Yeah. And my last name is Best, so Best. Okay. It's not because you're the best? No, it is. And, uh, Your family must have been very What does the AC stand for? Best. Come on. My family? Your family? Yeah. Yeah. What were your ancestors doing? <laughs> like, best. They probably got first choice. The best. best. Like, well, we know where we're going to start at. <laughs> um, what, were, what were Carver's thinking? Too busy chopping down things. I guess so. Anything at all. Um, and uh, so, yeah, Race Best was the initial name that I wanted for YouTube. And... It wouldn't let me have it for some reason. I've never seen a channel with Race Best, and when you search it, nothing pops up. Uh, so I added um, the AC in front of it because initially when I started my YouTube channel, I thought I was going to be making videos specifically around Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and I was part of a forum called the Acorn Cafe that was for that show. And so I put AC Race Best, and now I'm in a pony fandom where everyone knows me as AC Race Best, and everyone's like, but what's the AC stand for? Saber's still convinced it's Antichrist, but <laughs> I've been trying to work off that, that old image for a while. You have your hand up. Um, Saber, why did you delete that, uh, that the first Ponies vs. Critic video? Why do you delete any video, Saber? Hmm? That's a good question. Um, well, it's not deleted. It's unlisted, right? It's unlisted. Yeah. Um, Thank you. There was uh, one thing about being a content creator is you will look back on your past work and be like, what was I thinking? Mm -hmm. Or you'll look back at it and say, wow, that was really bad. And like, in this sense, the only reason why I took it away was because the information I laid out, I no longer necessarily agreed with. Like, I look at some of my work as stepping stones and I have no shame in them being there forever. Like if I become an A-list actor, which will never happen, someday, I'm still gonna keep my YouTube channel there and someone's gonna go, wow, that guy who was in Star Wars Episode Nine was, uh, was uh, a My Little Pony fan. Like, yeah, Where are you gonna be one of the aliens? Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, for the video the question, the, it, it's Pony versus Haters or, or, or Critics or something like that. I yeah, forget. I think I'm, you I'm, changed I'm, the name. I'm, I did. Um, in the video, I was, I don't even remember my really own content. Um, I think I was a bit harsh on like anyone who would oppose MLP. I was thinking like they're they're idiots, you know, and that, which isn't true. Like I guess the, what changed in me is I thought it, it's important to to not write people off if that makes any sense because someone could offer constructive criticism, but you might mistake it or you might or you might be confused and think it's just hate. Like, that's because I had a situation that popped up and it made me kind of rethink the video. So, I don't know, I made another one to replace it. Like, I made one called Ponies versus Critics Round 2. Yeah. And that was more of a revised, like, I guess, perspective on that topic. So the other one that was there, I mean, for crying out loud, like, that video had about, like, 25,000 comments. Comments. <laughs> Comments. <laughs> it's a lot of toxicity. That's a lot. And it was uh, to the point where I was like, I don't think I really helped anyone here. Not brownies, not people who are not brownies. It's just, and then because of that, I decided to start over and try again. I'm a lot happier like, but with the current video that's out. So I hope that answers your question. Nerd. You have <laughs> your hand up? Yes. Yeah. Right. Next question. No. <laughs> What's up? Legally. Yes. 
Yeah, yes. Just compl completely. You really buy hard. them off of iTunes, you <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> has rage in the corner. How yeah. do you get it? <laughs> after, after going to our Sunday school class, we I, I, with the blockbuster. <laughs> I've heard stories of a website called Yay Ponies that... Jay Haller, we don't talk about that I, I, I'm talking about what other people do. I, would, oh, I don't do that. Oh, you mean your friend who goes to yayponies.com? Yeah, right my right friend. Down, right there's, down, a, there's a website. <laughs> actually, the, actually the, it's a website that has a lot of episodes and fan work that they just set up for... Uh, we didn't wouldn't know yeah. about Even that. From past but I, I don't do that, but other people yeah. might. Maybe that's where they get their And stuff. I heard that some people, not us, some people <laughs> will even go to Pirate Bay to download all kinds of content. No. It's wrong. No. But you should support the episodes. You know, the only reason yeah. why you should ever go to Pirate Bay is to download Zootopia, that's it. Gotcha. <laughs> but yeah, you should support the show, show and like get the DVDs, though. Yeah, more, more so yeah. Zootopia, but yeah. Like, like going on to the piracy topic, and we won't get stuck on this, but like if you do like something, like truly like, like I like Game of Thrones, well, and yet I sometimes don't watch it live. <laughs> no, like there, if you really like something, like support it. Um, and if you don't, then don't that's on your. That's why Ray saw Zootopia twenty three yeah, times. Yeah, that's why you saw it twenty three times. And bought two Blu-rays, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> Why only two? Is that your question? Only two. <laughs> uh, no, it's actually it's, after brainwashing. The thing is, it's it, well, it's funny because the uh, with with two, I can answer why I got more than one. Is that di the Disney Store had one offer for pre-orders that they had these lithographs you can get these like nice quality lithographs. I'm like, I need that, so I pre-ordered it. But then I was sitting there, and I'm like, yeah, but Target has bonus footage and the 3D version. Okay, I get that too. And I was able to talk Sarah into letting me get that because I'm like, hey, what do you think about this? What if I got 14 Blu-rays? And she's like, no. Uh, but then I have people sending me pictures that they're like getting like every version that's released. There's like a, a, a red case and a blue case. And I'm like, oh, maybe, I, maybe I need to get more. No. <laughs> no. There's the, there's no. No. Yes. Yeah. Yes! Oh, yes! Is, oh. is Buy it, everything! Is it time Buy for everything. an intervention? I think so. <laughs> intervention convention. Race, we have like a race. Yes. We're worried about you. Why? We truly are. Yeah. Yeah. How many times did you see it in theaters? 23. That's not normal. No. There are directors who haven't watched their movies that many times. <laughs> yeah, like while they're making it. Maybe that's the problem with the directors. <laughs> I'll explain The Hobbit. <laughs> Ooh. No, yeah, I uh, I kept going back because I loved it. I mean, I, I never once got tired of seeing it, so that's why it wasn't like some people. Jay Holler drew that. Oh, you. Jay, that's me. <laughs> Thank you. Can you sign us later? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> me um, me too. But yeah, I, I kept going back because it it just was always interesting to me. I always got excited to go see it again. So it wasn't like a gimmick where I'm like, oh, I'll just keep seeing it as many times as I can. It was just. Fun. Always the balls of the Zootopia. Without yeah. fail. Without fail. Last night's didn't, which is kind of a good thing. During Mitch's thing? During Mitch's thing. Ah, that's surprising, actually. Yeah. No, no, we already brought it up. Oh, yeah, no, we yeah, did yeah. talk about it because Mitch said he hasn't seen it yet, and I know. I always does. By the way, I, if you see the revenants, he signed my arm, I think, 14 times. <laughs> and Ray's is some of a germaphobe, so that was like burning into his skin. Well, look, my germaphobe and chirp. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Question? Yes. Uh, a couple things. One, I've seen Zootopia nine times. Now why is it open? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is, what is the biggest mistake you can make when you start out on YouTube? Biggest mistake you can make? Uh, I feel like the biggest mentality mistake you can make is going into it with the immediate assumption that you're you're going to be big or, or you're going to hit success right away. Um, you have to kind of go in it I mean, for, pe for everyone it's different what the right reason is, but I've found that the people who stick with it the most and tend to get successful with it are the ones that got into it for the first place because they just wanted to have fun and it was an interest of theirs to make the video. Uh, if you're having fun, you enjoy the stuff that you're putting out there, I feel like the audience will eventually come if, if you stick with it. Um, but yeah, it, do, go into it for yourself not so much for the like the audience or everyone else necessarily, um, and just expect it to be a 
a long road. <laughs> what do y'all think? Um, I'd say probably one of the biggest mistakes you could make is like just forgetting to make content. Like if you if you you really need to stay consistent. Like if you, if you want to like keep an audience on your channel. So like like try to try to schedule something out that you can do like that you know if you can do like something every week. Trying to do that, or if it's like something every two weeks or maybe twice a week, depending on like how how your schedule is and the content that you're yeah. making. Yeah. What do you think, Jay? I mean, you covered most of the points other than you got to do it for that, that sweet, sweet YouTube money, right? Dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the money. No, yeah, no, 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 the money. Yeah, the, the, all, all tens of dollars. All like, yeah, yeah I, got tw I got like $23 maybe. Like, and that took three years to make. No. Well, Saber had a funny moment. You were like, your, your yeah. Warcraft video, you were like, hey, I've made two, two cents. cents. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, 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 obviously, obviously, I'm, I'm, obviously, I'm joking. I'm, I mean, you guys covered the points pretty well. You got, you know, this is kind of a say, do as we, do as I say, do not as I do, because as you said I keep consistent content and I yeah. fail, I fail at doing that a lot. But, um, but yeah, just you know, you got to keep it up cons consistently to keep people's interest. Um, people like having a schedule a little bit. You know, it's like having TV shows around every week at the same time. You know what to expect. Um, I think also a big mistake is to be discouraged, like, quickly. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, you're, it's not, I mean, for some folks, okay, seven billion people on this planet, and all of us have all kinds of personalities. And when you're dealing with people, there's never, it's not one plus one equals two, it's gonna be all kinds of, you know, you can do this, you can do that, it worked for this guy, it worked for that guy, this is how I did it, well, that's how he did it, or she did it, whatever. There's a thousand different ways to skin a cat, which I don't know where that saying came from, <laughs> but whatever. Um, to peel an orange. Yeah. All right, so, which is actually kind of untrue because I think it's only one way to peel I think it's one way to But that. aside the point, um, like, there's a guy called Grade A Under Ray. Yeah. Y'all know yeah. who he is? Okay, I was sharing this story about him because he's kind of a, an interesting Cinderella story. He's one of the more popular YouTubers right now. He's got, I think, about 3 million subscribers or something. I think he just said 4 million. 4? God, please. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. The guy, he uses Microsoft Paint for his visuals, and he records on his, like, kind of junky phone. Samsung yeah, like Galaxy 2. Yeah, that's insane. Like, he's not using a hundred dollar, like... He's got 2.2 .2 right now. But, but still, the guy... Yeah, but still, he's got, he's got like... Well, <laughs> it's still a lot. I found him, does. uh, when I stumbled across the channel, it was, like, March 2015, 30,000 or something subscribers. He's got two million now, or something, and he's on the rise. And that goes to show that what he did worked for him. He's consistent. He, and at first, when you see his first videos, you're like, eh, it's not right. But he eventually has a breakthrough. I think every single YouTuber will eventually have that moment where they find something like, this works. Now you replicate it. And you hope, and, and all the stuff you replicate and find success, then you diversify. That way you don't get put in the corner. Because there, what's, one thing I find super interesting are YouTubers who used to be really big and now they're just kind of a corpse. Like, or man, I'm not sure what you're saying. Uh, or yeah. sad channels, that is. Channels. Like, like, uh, or you think you know, ever, anybody remember Fred? Fred. Yeah. 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 Like his channel now, the, the videos on it barely like make over 10,000 views. And this guy was yeah. like Harold to be like, he was one of the first big YouTubers ever. Like, you know, hey, it's Fred! With high pitching waves and... And it was, I mean, when I found him back in like 2007 or whatever, I thought this is really funny stuff. He had like- You thought that was funny? I really did. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. It's okay. It, no, it, it, was, it was funny. Happy it was funny. <laughs> but the, uh, now, and then he went to Nickelodeon, <laughs> and then after that, it just kind of, like, If, if we've learned anything, is like, YouTube doesn't translate well to television? No, it does not. <laughs> don't, don't, or, don't. Or movies. Yeah, open is jealous of YouTubers actually because a lot of the times they get more views. Uh, the YouTubers yeah. get more views than the TV shows. They get more viewers in general. It's so, it's like the medium is. Switching. It's gonna keep changing. Mm -hmm. This next decade, it's gonna be super fast. I want to add one more thing to basically what you were kind of saying as far as equipment goes. As I think that could be a big mistake. Is sometimes people jump into it thinking if I have a thousand hot and yeah, lots of expensive equipment, that would that's be gonna be exactly good. Yeah, no, it's it's more about the idea. Mm -hmm. And it is about the equipment. Don't spend a lot of money when you're getting started. You know, all you need is yeah, probably a three hundred dollar camcorder, and maybe if you want to get a nice mic for recording, it's like other than that, that should set you on the right track. Yeah. And then getting and, like a video editor. And our friend Jim, uh, he does movie reviews, and he just uses a webcam. 
and just like good audio with his mic. Mm -hmm. so. And, and to kind of add on that, um, YouTube is extremely unpredictable. You yes. you can spend um, you know hours and hours and hours on something, and it'll only get so many. It won't it won't you know take off. It's like okay, it didn't work. And then you could spend five minutes on something, and it blows up, and it's like yeah, I yeah. completely agree. You know, that's, weird. It, it's yeah. unpredictable. Um, so like you were saying, you guys were saying, you know, usually you want to start small with your equipment, and I mean, good equipment's good. Don't get me wrong. It's it's good to have if you want to if that's the aesthetic you're going for. But um, you should yeah. Buying a new camera, like you said, is not going to give you a personality that people are going to like or anything like that. So, yeah. Like, you can give me the best paintbrush in the world and then tell me to paint a masterpiece, <laughs> and I go, I don't know how. <laughs> I, don't know. I need to practice with the idea. Are you ready to your hand up? Uh, I want to go to you. Uh, actually, I have a question for Saber and Race. Yes. Okay. Um, like the 300 video. Uh, I was playing with the idea of doing like a retrospect video. I guess. Um, Are we going to do like a commentary over Bella Degroni? Yeah, it never happens. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of ideas never happen. Yeah. Um, a lot of my old videos, I feel like, I almost feel like it's kind of like closing the book, where it's like, nah, I did that. You know, that's I, I finished that chapter, and now I'm on a new, you know, I'm in a new book now, I'm in a new chapter. I'm trying something that's fresh, and I. I think, I mean, when it comes to making content, like, don't limit yourself. You never know what the future holds. Uh, but for right now, I think I'm going to leave that be. I'm going to keep trying to do other reviews and other analysis videos on the topics that catch my fascination. And then maybe, I don't know, down there, I go, oh, look, here are my old videos, and this is why I thought about this, and this is how it changed. So I, I got to see what my audience is in tune with, right, at the moment, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Do you have any worries about doing demolition derby effectively above a giant source of methane? <laughs> As in, like, like the dangers involved? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I um actually for those that do watch, uh, this coming season opens up with a bang, and in a, a bigger way than I ever intended because I actually had something happen in a demolition derby in that first night of destruction that we have coming up, that, that'll be on the series, where uh, I had a malfunction in my car. Now, malfunctions in demolition derby cars sometimes range from, oh, my radiator blew up, oh, my engine stopped running, oh, I broke an axle. This one, my seat broke. And in a demolition derby, your seat is the one thing that's like, you know, has you strapped in. And what happened was my T-bone bar was installed too low and I hit a car at pretty high speed up against the K-Rail. And when I did that, I broke both of his front axles. So of course I was proud, but I was like, man, that hurt. I was thinking it was because I hit him up against the K-Rail and uh, you know, he basically hit the wall. What happened was when I hit him, because of how torque works, everything above that bar bent around the bar. And essentially all that, that cushion and, and protection was gone, and my back was essentially up against the T-bone bar. And I took two solid hits after that. The first one was like after that hit, where I went, um, something's wrong. Like something broke here. Like there's something wrong with my seat. And I kind of pulled to the side, like got off the course like I should have, <laughs> but I, I pulled to the side and I'm, and I'm like kind of assessing like what's going on. And I had my car sitting in reverse and I heard a car coming. And this was a guy that we do demolition derbies with. His name is Johnny. And this guy will take full court shots on you, which it's legit. It's not like a dirty move. And he had no idea that I had my issue. And I saw, I, I heard him. And at the last second, I saw him coming. And I was like, this is going to hurt. And it did. And, and this demolition derby happened in January. And I have my hand right now on the spot. I could still feel that hit. Like, there, I went to the doctor that week because I had to check out and see if like, I did something to my back because it was in pain. So there, there is a danger involved and it's always something that, you know, we, we take as many steps as we can to preventing something bad from happening. Like, ever since this happened, we now have like a, a set uh, height for T-bone bars. Like they have to be above the spot because I was the guinea pig who found out, oh, you can't do them too low. Um, 
I've never had something that extreme ever happen, and we have a really, really good safety crew at, at the track. Um, so, like, I had a, a car for the first time catch on fire, like full on fire, uh, in the last event I just did. So we've had a lot of great moments so far this year. <laughs> But, uh, and yeah, like, not once was I concerned. I, I knew the fire was there. I knew my exits on the car. I knew, you know, all I have to do is unstrap, you know, watching my surroundings, making sure that all the rest of the cars are stopped. You know, it's, it's a big thing about not panicking in those events. Uh, and just knowing ahead of time, this is how I'm gonna get out of the car in case this happens. And just having trust in the people around you, so. Yeah, I've, I've, had, I've had it come up, like demolition derbies, it was hard for me to get back into a demolition derby after that incident. Um, but I did, and it actually went really well, as you guys will see in the follow-up, but yeah, well, it, it took, what's that? It's good to know we're not gonna lose you because of the safety No, yeah, and, and that's the thing, is there's always that risk. It's, it's a risk that is always gonna be involved, and it's not something like, I, I'm never gonna go into it saying, I'll be safe, like, I, or not that I'll be safe, but that I won't get hurt. I know that doing what I'm doing, it's dangerous, you know, and, and trailer racing is probably the most dangerous thing we do because we're driving through trailers, these campers that have metal and all this crap inside of them, and there's no telling where that stuff's gonna go at times. It's just about gauging it right and, and trying to play it safe from behind the wheel and being smart. So, yeah, good question though. Uh, let's go to you. Okay. Um, did you dye your hair, Saber? <laughs> uh, I did back in like September. I dyed this part blue because oh. apparently that's what every YouTuber is supposed to do at this point. <laughs> and then I decided, oh, maybe I should not do that so I can go interview for white collar jobs. <laughs> so I dyed it back to brown, or my little sister did hers, a hairstylist. And I think she rushed through it because somehow this blonde <laughs> hip showed up. So I'm kind of back in middle school with my smash mouth face. <laughs> and we're raised. Right. Yeah. Good question. Um, yeah, I'm at like 97.5, and I feel like I've been at 97.5 for the last year. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's it's closing in right now, and and right now my channel is actually kind of in a, a phase change right now. Um, Obviously, I've always been doing stuff with cartoons, and that's gonna continue. But what I've always wanted to do is break out into doing more stuff with Disney. And I've never had that segue, like, oh, this is the thing that I'm gonna start doing, until a certain movie that came out you know, in March. Um, and I feel like this is the beginning of the transition where I'm gonna tie in some more Disney stuff. Um, now that being said, the 100K question, I have an idea of something I want to do. The thing is I, I haven't like said, oh, this is for sure what I'm going to do because it's going to take time and I don't know if I actually have the capabilities of putting it together. But uh, like a long time ago, I made a, a movie in high school and I kind of want to take that and, and put it back out there uh, because it's, it's really, <laughs> I guess you'll just let me know how it is. Uh, but it was just it was just a funny experience. I wrote the whole thing. I was proud that I, I was able to put the whole thing together. I'm sure the timing's terrible. I'm sure it gets really boring and really dumb. But I haven't seen it for like a long time either. So what I want to do is actually kind of do a, a react style thing to it where I'm watching it and going, what the hell was I thinking here? <laughs> what was this? What, okay. But yeah, so I, that's, that's an idea I have. I obviously... Worst case, if I'm not able to put that together, because I don't even know if I could find the source <laughs> for that stuff, I at least am gonna put something out as a big thank you, because 100K is something I never imagined. I remember when I hit 10K, and I was like, no way, I never thought I'd see the day. I remember when I hit 1,000, same deal, I was like, this is insane. When I, when I made the first Bronies React, I had 167 subscribers, and that video in three days hit 100,000 views. And with that, started coming to the audience, and then taking the reacts and making them into a series. Kind of like what you were just talking about, how you, you take what the, you know, there's an audience there for it, if you enjoy doing it, keep doing it. And yeah, I mean, I'm just amazed that I'm even talking about the potential of hitting 100,000. That's crazy, so thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you guys think of any cons? <laughs> it's like you get money. Because I don't think it, it yeah, restricts so you. 
come to reality with the crushing truth that you make like two cents per video. It's <laughs> uh, the big YouTubers, I mean, like Mark Flyer, they're making content. Yeah, like anybody who has like over a million subscribers, they make it's a like, Yeah. There's a really interesting gap between like us versus them. I mean, there's, there's a them, them now. now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paleo. Thank you. <laughs> Paleo, right here. You all have good conventions. Yeah. Go back to Georgia. <laughs> no, uh, as far as, and I guess it depends also on your content. Like, uh, we don't make content that comes out every single day like mm -hmm. Mark does or PewDiePie. It's not our full-time job. <laughs> no, it's not. And even then, if I made this my full-time job, it's still, there's a lot of, like, unknowns. Like, I can make a video that no one watches after I put a week of labor into it, and there goes my rent, or there goes my food for the month. Um, versus Let's Players, who have a higher turnover rate with their content. Not turnover, turn whatever. I guess output. Uh, retention? <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, like, you think, oh man, those guys, you know, 100,000 almost, 200,000. 17 subscribers. Oh. <laughs> Part of it. It's um, 18 now. I just subscribed. <laughs> you can drive. Uh, no, um, there's a huge gap. Like, you, you eventually, I think Mando Pony's a good example. Like, he yeah. can do it on his own. He's got 500,000, and he makes enough music, and he does enough topics. And plus he's selling that music. Yeah, he sells yeah, the music, yeah. which is nice. Like, musicians, it, it's different, because, like, if, if, you, if you, you can get, like, uh, like an like a video about an album, or you're putting up your song, and it's like, hey, my album's out. They, they're they selling their album, which would, uh, compared to like YouTube revenue, that'd be a lot. Yeah, compared like Black to, Griffin, like, yeah. even though I have more subs than he does, like, man, he knows how to market his stuff. Like, he makes money with his albums. So don't buy his albums anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Make us go feel my, better. Go to my, go to my Patreon <laughs> account. Um, go to my Red Bull. Uh, a, a, a good, successful YouTuber will realize, okay, I went this far with my videos, and now it's time to think outside the box and monetize my content through merchandise, through albums, through whatever. Um, Fun fact, we actually sell shirts now. <laughs> we take them out. Oh yeah, who's my shirts? Yeah. We sold one. That's Woo, good stuff to start. <laughs> Um, it's kind of a thing, it's an uphill battle, especially in this fandom, because it's a very niche thing. It's a glass ceiling, too. Yeah, I mean, you saying like video gamers are much more, it's much more wi wider appeal. Yeah. And, um, and those guys are making a video every day, each, video, each one of those videos is getting a million views. I mean, I'm talking about like the top people, like, you know, PewDiePie and all that. Um, but yeah, even the people who aren't making a million views, as long as you go to making content every day, or like, you know, Game Grumps puts out like, what, three videos a day? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, an inch of one, yeah. you know. That's, you know, hey, they're, they're lucky enough to have the audience and the, the oh, young okay. fans. So as, as you were saying, you have to think outside the box with the merchandise and all of that. It, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, but it's always an, it's an uphill like, battle if you're thinking about monetization and making a career out of this. You're an entrepreneur at some point. You gotta know how to sell it. Like, there, I can't really think of a big YouTuber who's broken a million who's just like, eh, I just think it is, that's it. Like, every big YouTuber looks like, more often than not, they have a way to make extra money with it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so I guess I guess to say the pros of monetization, you make money. It opens the door for you to go out and get it. So the cons, like I said, I don't think it restricts you any more than having a non-monetized channel. You have to pay taxes eventually. Yeah, it sucks. yeah, yeah. That's life. <laughs> so that, there's your cut. There's the one cut right there. You do have to pay taxes. Okay. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Okay, fine. Super fine. government. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. That, in that regard, okay, so uh, copyright law is pretty dated. They never really uh, took into account the rise of the independent creator online. Because when they were forming those laws, it was, the internet was still young at the time. I don't think anyone realized it would blow up as big as it has, especially for people who are artists, musicians, and creators. So um, the Digital Millennia Copyright Act like, because copyright's not evil. I mean, we think it's synonymous with either, oh, copyright. No, it's there, it's there to protect yeah. content. Because, like, during the 80s and 90s, there were a lot of rip-off VHS tapes of everything. And it was a way to protect, you know, like, Paramount or Warner Bros. or Disney from getting their hard, you know, the content they worked hard on to protect it from people who'd steal it. Because in China, it's, it's like, off the charts, just booming <laughs> everywhere. Um, now it's kind of backfired, where now it's, has the sites are aimed at the independent creators, the ones who really are quite harmless in the grand scheme. And but since the law is so like just 
you know, the, a stamp, that's it. it. It doesn't really have any room for like discerning, like, oh, this is different from that. So, but I guess the good news is that the fair use stuff is changing. Because fair use, it, it lets a content creator have a bit more like elbow room with their content. It's in the spotlight right now, so it's yeah. it's something that's mm -hmm. probably gonna like to change. Yeah. It's gonna keep changing. It's, it's a little bit of an irony that um, a lot of people who get hit with those copyright claims are doing it and they're actually promoting the material. <laughs> yeah. They're actually like, they're, they're saying, hey, people that may not have known about this before, and oh, we, but, um, but you can't have that because it's our content, so we want to make money off of that. So we're going to take that down, and it's like... Or they'll take the money you make. Right, or that. Um, and actually, Hasbro's been pretty lenient. For the Lately? Most, for the most part. Oh, maybe, maybe just... Yeah. <laughs> no, Hasbro usually doesn't take stuff down. They usually just monetize it for themselves. Yeah. They, so. Well, be careful. Yeah. Buy um, it might have yeah. changed recently. Uh -oh. Yeah, oh. because oh. something happened with Race. There's a reason yeah. I haven't released the React yet. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah, I got a message that said, this has been blocked worldwide. And I said, that's not good. Uh, that was something so, we deal with in college, yeah. too. But so. luckily, hey, the good news, the good news is that they give you a warning. Before they give you oh, a so funny. <laughs> Whereas they just give, don't give you a strike. Do it again, I know. Wait, wait. Swear to God. No, I'm, this is new this. to me, actually, so they did not give you a strike. They just give you a warning? Or? Uh, yeah. Well, what happened was they... <laughs> so I was, I was putting up uh, two things, and the first thing got hit, and I noticed the worldwide block, and I'm like, I haven't seen that in a long time. So then I, I checked the channel deal, and it, it had a message there that said, Warning, if you have one more video get blocked worldwide, which the next one would have been, that was at like 85% uploaded, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> um, it, it, that, that I would get a strike. Okay. And I went, stop, 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 stop. And I knew it wouldn't, like, that's when my internet was going to freak out and be like, instant upload. Yeah. Um, right. So yeah, so I don't know if, ha if, if anything's changed with, with Hasbro's hits or it was just what I was putting up. It wasn't, it wasn't the React, it was a straight up episode. Don't do that. I don't that. Okay. <laughs> like I said, it was a it, the reason yeah. I was doing that was because video it was an, e an easy way to convert the videos. I was just oh, downloading yeah. them off YouTube, so I'd put them up and then take them down. Use handbrake. Hey, well, for the record, uh, thank you, Jay. You're welcome. But <laughs> for the record, uh, it had worked plenty of times in the past. Yeah, no, no. And then it got me here. So I don't know if the policies changed. That's why I'm being careful to react. You have a question? Uh, this is just like kind of tying in with uh, the, the, the fair use stuff. And um, and I'm just like uh, wondering, like are some like what uh, videos are monetized? Because I know like I think with uh, that uh, one of the like I think you use Star Fox music in that. Mm -hmm. Can you monetize that? Or it's interesting what they consider or what a company will go after. Like some companies are more relaxed than others. Like Viacom is notorious when it comes to just if you even like whisper the name SpongeBob, <laughs> they're coming for you. <laughs> Versus, like, let's say, you know, Hasbro's been chilled out in a lot of ways mm -hmm. with, like, PMVs and stuff and using their, like, content. Um, it just, it varies. It varies on, on like, because sometimes you might get lucky. Like, I made a Star Wars video back in, like, I think November or December, and I tried using John Williams music. No, that wasn't going to fly. So what did I do? I decided... Video game music? Yeah, I used, yeah, like, an 8-bit version of Star Wars, and that was fine. Mm -hmm. So... It, There'll be times where you have to like, and, and if you have a deadline, like, like make sure you give yourself some time to upload your video yeah. and see how YouTube reacts to it because they might block <laughs> YouTube. YouTube reacts. Mm -hmm. they, <laughs> trademarked. Uh, oh. How uh, how they how because there might be it might be fine and be like cool, but then again, two weeks from now you might get hit with a copyright claim. Yeah, when I when I make the reacts, for example, since it's so many different pieces put together, and Jay, I don't know like with the anthologies and whatnot, mm -hmm. if you guys have had to deal with a lot of this too. Yep. Yeah, okay. where, where like what I'll do is if there's, a, if there's a section that I'm not sure about, I'll just upload that section and, and leave it private and then let it sit for a few days and that'll, typically it's, it's within a day or two where you'll see what gets hit. For example, I, um, when I, I put out the promo for the low budgets coming, I used interstellar music. And the reason I did that was because I, I used it also last year, a different song, but I knew that I, can, I can't monetize it, like it, it tells me, oh, we know you used our music, and so I can't monetize it. But I also know that it doesn't get blocked anywhere. It's still viewable for everybody, and that's, that's okay for me. So I'm like, okay, I, that's fine. And, but I know how Interstellar music works, so it's like, okay, I can use that in this spot and know that all it's gonna say is, this is Interstellar music, if you wanna buy the soundtrack here, go do it. 
Um, so, yeah. You know, it's interesting that you use the Interstellar music because my review of Interstellar when it came out got blocked like a year later. <laughs> or not not blocked, but it got um, copyright D the third ID. Yeah, it got a copyright ID on it. So like, Warner Brothers makes the video money on that video now. But the thing is, like, nobody watches that video anymore anyway. <laughs> I got so. a bunch of videos of like top tens that are unlisted for like the top ten pop music, and I'll get emails saying Hasbro's now claim this video. I'm like, can't enjoy your not getting money because I'm listed. <laughs> Whatever. It's just a YouTube it's, automated system. That's it's how find it's it. walking on eggshells. It's really you like you just gotta kind of hope and pray that what you're using is not gonna you know tr trigger the alarms of some company. It's like Russian roulette. That's why it's important, <laughs> it's important to make sure your content is like transformative. Put, put air horns in everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah, like um, I I I really only use screenshots in my yeah. videos now, so that's what that way I can get around uh, like copyright ID. Though there are some. Companies are even that insane. Where yeah, that, that's what happened with the Interstellar review. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, retar yeah it's ridiculous. I, I can't <laughs> All right, next question. I know that you guys have something. Um, just for everybody in the room, really, uh, iMovie music, the music that comes with iMovie, never gets paid. Hmm. Ever, ever. So just the FYI. There, there are. Uh, a bunch of like royalty songs. Free, 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 yeah, free, royalty free, free music. Like music your best text. friend. Yeah. Well, we're part of a network called. People on YouTube that just make a whole bunch of styles of music and go, I don't care if you use it. Yeah. Just, yeah. just credit me. Yeah. Just credit like, yeah. my, my outro music is actually from an artist in the fandom, uh, General Mumble. Yeah. And I use uh, I have intro music and outro music that was made by our friend Hirazashi, who's a musician, a musician. So that's cool. And um, in my case, I you have a network that they actually provide to whoever's on their network a a, a big library of what music. Network that's part the, of? Hmm? What network you part of? What uh, network you part of? Studio Seventy One is what they're called now. Oh, really? Yeah, not no, a network. It used to be called the Collective. Now they changed their name. But, no, but the Collective. Sounds like a collective. <laughs> but they, uh, but like, like there's if if you're lucky enough to be in a network. Um, they're a person like that. They they give you some stuff like that. Yeah, yeah me and Saber are part of Channel Frederator, so uh, we have like Audio Micro, which has a ton of music to use. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a free agent. agent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I see a hand over there. Somebody left the camera off the seat. Oops. Oh. Yeah, and it's like a really good camera. We should well, tell the TSA. The, uh, <laughs> the, the, the staff, the concept. Give one of the staff, yeah. and then they and can tweet it out. Thanks for pointing that out, though. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure that the person claims it. Every don't, panel, don't show them the camera. Be like, we'll describe it. <laughs> Every panel I've been to today, well, someone's I lost. I don't know how easy this is going to be to answer, but um, you guys all seem like real. Like what we're seeing is just who you are in your regular life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm wondering how important that is as far as making videos. Hmm. Being ourselves? Yeah, basically. instead of like creating this. Uh, a, a, person. Person. I feel like, a persona. I feel like it kind of splits down the middle with a lot of YouTubers, mm -hmm. where there's some yeah. people who have a specific character that they play, and then there's people like us who are, they're like, "Wow, you're just as dumb as you are in your video." Familiar with like, okay. like okay, for I think in early internet, in early YouTube, we saw a lot of that of people playing characters like like James, the angry video Brown. game nerd, mm -hmm. the nostalgia critic. People like that who have a character, and they, and they, it's a way for them to brand themselves with their outfit, their attitude, and what they say and what they do. Um, I think this current wave of YouTubers, you don't see as much of that, of that anymore. Like Markiplier is Markiplier, John Tron is John Tron. I'm sure they're not always constantly like that. You know, they're still acting for their videos, but it's not like John Tron is not the same person as John Jafari. Is that his last name? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Jafar. He was another guy. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, none He's of us. We don't do. Is he really? Yeah. Well, it it still is out there. I'm a I'm a fan of Filthy Frank. And, Filthy yeah. Frank. And yeah. he that's definitely a character. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, you know, so it's I mean it's out there, but like you're saying. Or yeah. Ethan from H3H3. Yeah. yeah. Like. Do you it, think there's one way of doing it that's safer? Whatever works for a person. Yeah, it's yeah. different yeah, for everybody. It, what, whatever works. Um, I mean, the the nice thing is, like, from our our point of view, since, like you say, a lot of what you see on camera on YouTube is what you see here. I think that's easier for people to connect with us in person because then they're like, we've had people who've said, "I feel like I've known you for years," and that's cool, you know, because then it's like it's, my stalker doesn't do the same. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my, uh, I'm sorry. 
Don't touch me. Can <laughs> <laughs> you say, switch seats with them, please? <laughs> no, like, I know that for some conventions, like, where, like, where the nostalgic critic goes to, like, he'll be his character on stage, but then, you know, he switches clothes, and he wants to be Yeah, he's Doug Walker. Now he's Doug Walker. Yeah. And, uh, maybe make a distinction if you're going to have a character. Yes. Make it clear. Yeah. Here's a good one. All right, so uh, James Rolfe, who's the angry video game nerd, made a video not too long ago expressing his opinion and his decision to not review Ghostbusters 2016. He made that video as James Rolfe. Yeah. Not as the angry video game nerd, but as himself. Because if it was the angry video game nerd, we took a lot more screaming and shouting and, I guess, kind of... Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But James was more like, eh, I just don't want to review it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. It's James saying that, not his character. Okay. But though he is his character, or the, he plays a character, but his character doesn't mean that's him to a secret. Okay. That makes sense. All right, we got about I seven say, minutes. Yeah, we can do a few more questions. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things that just don't lay that out. Like music, uh, my, one thing I do for music is I'll, I'll look up on my phone to see if it's blocked anywhere. Mm -hmm. like, like I'll look up a song. If I can find it on YouTube, typically that's a good sign. You don't but, want it blocked in your phone. Your fo the phone yeah, is becoming more, the mobile device is becoming yeah. more and more of the item where you're gonna be getting your views. But, but a lot of stuff, you, it's just hit or miss. That's why, it, most of this, like I was referencing, you know, when, when we're trying to check something out, we'll put it out early mm -hmm. to see how it gets hit. I made a Warcraft video uh, about a few days ago. <laughs> Pandering. <laughs> Which you want to channel so far. <laughs> uh, but uh, the video used a lot of soundtrack music from World of Warcraft and Warcraft 3. I only used a little bit of footage from the trailer of the Warcraft movie. And I used a lot of cinematics from like, Blizzard and their games. None of it was even touched. Not even like, you know, this is copyright, but we're not blocking it, but none of this. And I mean, a part of it makes me wonder if it's a, the network we're part of protecting yeah, us. Yeah, because I know, um, what was it, Stev? Yes, yeah, Stev. Okay. Like once he left the network, a lot of his content was like instantly flagged. I, if you work with a network, they, you know, you get more muscle, they'll talk. If you're under their, I guess, umbrella, it's like, oh, that's a freighter with a person, you know, don't worry. Unless like that person's like uploading like episodes of Game of Thrones or something yeah. it's different. Or MLP. Or MLP. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess uh, I don't know. Well I have a I have a trailer yeah. example. Um, a couple years ago, I I was like in that mode of like, what can I ponify that's like different or weird? And for some reason I came across the trailer for Twister. <laughs> yeah. And I made I made this video called Twister Pie and all I did was I took the audio from the Twister trailer and I completely put it over uh, you know with clips of MLP. And that ended up actually getting taken down from YouTube. Like it wasn't a strike, they just were like, This doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> this is bleh. And um, I, was, I was surprised because it took them like four years to find that video. But at the same time, it also threw me off because I'm like, oh, okay, so audio from trailers. I guess that makes sense, but well, it's something you don't know. It, it, it does depend. Well, too, yeah, it only took them four I, years. I think, <laughs> I think with newer trailers, <laughs> I, I think with newer trailers, they kind of want you to like react to them because um, they, More me, uh, yeah, me, Saber, and Jim did a reaction to the Star Wars trailer from last year. Mm -hmm. And... Um, like, it, it was fine. It wasn't hit at all. Yeah. Companies yeah. that know how to embrace the advantage of viral marketing via reactions <laughs> yeah. on YouTube. I was really proud of that video, though. It was called Twister Pie, and basically, <laughs> Pinkie Pie was the twister. Oh, <laughs> she was the, 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 the twister pie. The natural force. That, yeah, so. <laughs> I love it. All right, uh, yes, yeah. sir. Uh, is it okay if I ask a question not really about me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> well, that'll take up the rest of the time. They bring up these issues in the kids' film. But also the fact that technology wise, it's amazing what they did with like, the hair and the fur and the physics of the clothes and stuff. So I just want to hear from you. Um, I, well, okay. A lot of people have asked me, what is the thing that you love about Zootopia? And I've yet to actually have a really good, solid, straight up answer besides 
pretty much everything. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it 23 times, so I guess that would... <laughs> Put Hearthstone away! Well, well, what deck are you using? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, from the characters to the world to... <laughs> that's funny. You are going to start at home. Um, to, to the story, I mean, I, I, I became so immersed in this world that Disney created. And I also love the, there's a lot of interactivity between the people. It kind of reminds me actually of the MLP staff, where like the directors are on Twitter talking with people all the time, um, and the co-directors and the animators and, and people who worked with the story. They're up, they're, they're interacting with people. Like I haven't really paid attention to, I guess, but I haven't seen before either. Like I've never realized how interactive those people can be. Um, yeah, no, I just, like Zootopia, I don't know, it just, it did something to me that no movie's done to me. It's, just, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nice. Yes. Oh, you're done. It, it was okay. Oh, that movie was okay. Yeah, I just said everything. Oh, there you go. Questions? We have anyone else? We have two minutes. Yeah. Um, I don't really ask this just to be, uh, I don't really ask this like as insulting, but it's just uh, curiosity. Okay. Are you a furry? <laughs> All right. Are so, you? so this is funny. <laughs> this is funny because I don't know. I'll be honest. There, I, I looked up the definition of a furry because so many people were asking me, and I said, "Definitely Webster's." You know, Webster's. It wasn't there. It Urban wasn't Dictionary. There. Urban Dictionary. I was looking up everywhere, to which I finally found out that there's actually like the first thing to tell you is, yeah, there's actually no concrete definition of a furry. No, well, science. So I went, well, great. So, yeah. do I consider myself a furry? No. But. Do other people consider me a furry? Yes. So, yeah. I don't know where that line's drawn. Like, like for me, I've always considered like someone who would consider themselves a furry would be someone who would like, go to furry conventions. I'll, I'll be honest, actually. I've seen Zootopia 23 times. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, if that's part of the definition, then yes. Like, if someone said this is the definition It actually of says that in the dictionary, like, if you've seen Zootopia 23 <laughs> times, you are a furry. Man. <laughs> Too bad I didn't Darn see it. it. Yeah, so, so no, I mean, and, and the thing is, like, I don't have an issue with, like, the furry fandom or anything. Like, I don't, I, I don't really know much about it. Um, maybe that's why there's not a definition, I don't know. But, Furries have a lot, like, they, their reputation goes a lot farther back than bronies, and they've been around longer. Yeah, yeah. a lot longer. That's what I thought. I, I used to think that a fursuit had something to do with it, but I, I, I know for a fact you have to that have people have pony ears to be a brownie. <laughs> oh, so I'm not one then. I got a tail. Oh, yeah. 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 No, but uh, so yeah, it's, it's always been like an interesting thing. I even, I've been considering, but I don't know if I'm going to end up doing it, making a video about what makes someone a furry just because. I'm sure I, that'd be not controversial at all. But why don't you go make yeah. why don't you go make an MLP versus Critics 3, okay? It's Part the, the, the trilogy like three, three, yeah, yeah. three point five. He wants it. Yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't consider myself like I don't define myself as a furry. But I love certain movies with anthropomorphic characters. Well, but then there's ones that I'm not so into either. What makes a brownie then? Well what what makes a brownie? Yeah. I, I consider it uh, to be someone who's a fan of MLP. Are you a fan so of So you're a fan of Zutopia, meaning you're a furry. Yeah. Well, yes. wouldn't that make me like a Zootopian, technically? No, stop denying it. Are there, are, are there any furries in the audience? <laughs> no, I'm not trying. Are there any furries in the audience? Can you guys tell me? Am I a furry? Let's, let's weigh in on this. It's like a, it's like a self-label. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, it's like when I say that I consider a fan of MLP to be a brony, it doesn't mean that if they if they say, well, I'm not a brony, I'll just be like, okay, but in my eyes, that you that is my definition of what a furry is. That's why I'm asking, like, if there's somebody who is like, well, even though you don't consider yourself a furry, you're, wait, where you are or your interests, to me, you're a furry. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, just because I have a definition of what a a bronius doesn't mean that person then has to walk around and be like, okay, it's, it's on my identification card. It's on my license. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, uh, we'll, we'll do this quickly. We'll wrap this up. It was with the whole furry thing. Most people who are furries, they only consider an individual furry a furry if they have what they call a persona or their own anthropomorphic. 
See, technically, I've had so, one from so the rescue ranger charm. community. So I don't, but, and then we have ones for ponies, so I guess we're all furries up here, aren't we? <laughs> you see the Twitter profile? It's a disembodied head. So Clearly you're at... <laughs> I've seen the fan art. <laughs> you're about you're about the brown and red fairy. I'm everything. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's a great furry debate. <laughs>